Thank you all for coming. Thank you. I'm Taylor's dad. I wrote this stuff down because uh, I usually wing these things. I can't do this for my daughter. I, I have to do this written down. I'll fall off script. You know, a few days before my firstborn, David, who officiated the wedding, was born, my dad had a conversation with me and he said, uh, you're about to do the most important job you'll ever be given in your life. You're about to raise children. You can't be with them 24-7. You have to find a way to spend time with them and communicate, communicate all. Invent ways to share time. As our kids grew up, Roxanne and I had one rule. You gotta play something. Get off the sofa. Get outside. Go to the park. I don't care if you play second base, piano, you're in the choir, but you better adopt the team sport. It will help you in your lifelong life. Turned out all four of my kids chose sports. Made it kind of interesting. All four chose sports, all sports, all the time. Our calendar was ridiculous on how many places we had to be with different kids in different venues. So between coaching and refing and being a chauffeur, I wound up with an awful lot of face time with my four kids. Taylor was the youngest, and, and honestly the most content of the four. Self-entertaining, self-motivated. She was always organized. She was ready to go. Her equipment bag would be packed. Unlike her brothers, who would show up at a hockey game without skates. <laughs> Taylor's travel games in, in several sports gave us an awful lot of face time. So we had a lot of time to talk. And I think, um, as parents, if you get a chance to talk to your kids, you can become a little more than parents. You become friends. And as they get older, it kind of pays off. Because as, when they become adults and they're friends, it, it, it becomes a, a, a really good, nurturing thing for them. Brian, you got lucky. You found Taylor. Taylor, you got lucky. Just see that sometimes. Talk to me sometimes. Like my dad told me, you do the best you can. You spend all this time with you, with them, winding them up. You've done your job. You've done the best you could. If you spent as many hours as you could, you've done your best. With a little luck, things turn out. Things have turned out well.
So uh, for a little bit of context, I was a year younger than Butters, so I went off to a triple high. I didn't really know who he was or if we were really in that person to know each other. Um, he was just kind of like that guy who were a shop of waitress every single day. <laughs> that is until we uh, met face to face on the beer hall table. Butters, favorite hobby. <laughs> and in that moment, I realized how annoying, loud, and competitive Butters was. <laughs> and, you know, that's where I also had this unfortunate discovery where I had a lot of those same qualities. <laughs> and, uh, you know, after a couple of months of playing the sacred game and matching up on that battlefield, we just grew extraordinarily tight. And uh, he became my go-to guy for just about everything. And uh, little did I know that this would turn into an epic bond rivalry and friendship that would last for, for pretty much ever, whether it's Warzone, Fantasy, Golf, or who could tell more of the worst tequila shots at the bar? It's always been you. And it's been an awesome eight years, and I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't trade away a second of it. And uh, with a lot of that, naturally, it was a lot of shit talk. <laughs> and, uh, you know, for example, like, you know, I'm a firm believer of. The closer you are with somebody, the more willing you are to talk a little smack. So, for example, like, I'm a Dolphins fan, he's an Eagles fan, and uh, we'll chat each other, we'll chat each other back and forth, and it's fine because we're friends. But I would never say to a big group of Eagles fans, Heineken and the Commanders, And what happened to 
savage island. <laughs> and, um, you know, after a few months had passed and I got over it, um, I realized that this wasn't some flight. This wasn't some girl who was just here for coming season. She was, she was different. She was someone special. And that um, made Butters extremely happy. And someone that I thoroughly enjoyed to be around. And, uh, you know, I never thought about her being a guy with good taste, but I'll tell you what, I got to know Taylor to see how witty, fun, and genuine she was that I knew she'd be around for a very long time. So, you know, all jokes aside, you know, I had to take a couple of things at you, but I seriously want to congratulate you both on this amazing day. Uh, at this point, it feels like I've known you both for a lifetime, and I'm so excited to see where you think the next chapter of So. You know, Butters, especially, like, you've been a brother's case since you became us all those years ago, and we truly were inseparable from, you know, the Thursday calves, going to the gym, Savage Island, bowling, gaming, and now uh, I'm all for this every year. You know, I love everyone all of it, and, you know, I trust you, my life, my life, <laughs> my life. Uh, you've always had my back, and it's really damn good. So, um, you know, it's so easy to see why I fell in love with Taylor. She's beautiful, intelligent, charismatic, loud. Yeah, it's great to have, <laughs> great to have things in common. Uh, but I really could not be happier for you guys. I love you both, so congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, one more round of applause for all of our toast givers this evening.